special event that we're having before the board of directors meeting that's going to be uh, during the afternoon at the rooms besides to us. Uh, we are so pleased to be here at BNCC and we have our vice president, uh, BNCC president of uh, admissions directors, uh, Dr. Wallacer, who will, well, Mrs. Wallacer, I was key for uh, honoris causa. Uh, Wallacer, who will be a representing president uh, Antonio Perez and welcoming, uh, having a welcome remarks. Come on, please. Good morning, everybody. What a picture perfect day in New York City. So glad you can be here. It's also great to see our CUNY partners here. Uh, thank you so much for coming. Um, again, my name is Diane Wallacer. I'm the Vice President of Enrollment Management here. And on behalf of Dr. and President Perez, and the faculty and staff here, I welcome you to the Borough of Manhattan Community College. When I learned about, started to learn more about your organization, I was quite impressed with how you've taken um, a need of creating access and um, success initiatives for Hispanic students and how you've taken a gap area with technology and are really creating new resources for our students. Um, I liked how our missions meshed and we had the same goals, but we work very hard every day, but we, there are never enough resources. So we need partner institutions to help us with those resources and really want to compliment you on the work that you're doing with your organization. I look forward to meeting you as the day goes on and welcome you again to the college. I'll be back at 10 to talk a little bit more about CUNY and our institution. So look forward about with our ongoing conversations. So enjoy your day. Thanks so much. Thank you. Thank you, Mrs. Wallacer, Diane. And uh, also we have with us our chairman of the Heads Board of Director, Dr. Carlos Vargas. He's here with, with some of uh, his key staff uh, joining us, and we want him to do a welcome as well. Thank you very much, Ubelkis. Uh, it's, a, it's a real pleasure to, uh, to be here with you. Uh, I am not officially a member of this group right now because my name was not in the list, uh, but I'm coming here for this uh, Board of Directors uh, meeting. I am very, very excited about having this group come together because HEADS being an organization that relies on technology to ensure or maximize student success, uh, it's critical that we have conversations that have all of you around the table engaged in them. So I'm very pleased, actually, that uh, we have a number of individuals from uh, Southeast Missouri, which is where I am, Southeast Missouri State University, Dr. Billo and Chelsea Kale. Viola is the vice president for, well, I'm taking her, uh, mm -hmm. st stealing her thunder because we're going to go around introducing ourselves. But uh, I really believe it is important uh, for the board of directors of HEADS to listen to the conversations that you have and to take advantage of the skills and expertise that you have. Uh, it, otherwise, it just doesn't, doesn't work effectively. So I'm, I'm happy to be here. I look forward to listening to uh, your conversations. And uh, uh, thank you very much for the welcome uh, that we received from BMCC yes. and Dr. Perez, who is not here. Um, and look forward to a great day. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Chairman. Uh, also, uh, since we're having people joining us from Skype, we want them to uh, know you. And I'm going to pass uh, the microphone so you can introduce your name, please, and your position at the institution, and also uh, from which institution you are joining us. Let me start from here so you can, and over there. Good morning, my name is Cristalda Castilla, and I am the Director of Recruitment and Scholarships for the University of Texas, Rio Grande Valley. Good morning, my name is Debbie Gilchrist, and I'm the Director of Undergraduate Admissions and the Student Service Centers at the University of Texas, Rio Grande Valley. Good morning, everyone. I'm Carlos Rivera, Director of Admissions and Recruitment at Hostos Community College in the Bronx. Good morning, everyone. My name is Teresa Litvesago. I'm the Director of Instructional Services, um, part of IT at LaGuardia Community College. Good morning, Francisco Garcia, Director for Center for Online Learning and Teaching Technology, University of Texas Rio Grande Valley. 
Good morning, I'm Rene Sainz. I'm the Assistant Vice President for Distance Education at Inter-American University of Puerto Rico. And we have some of my colleagues also uh, joining us from Skype. Hi, I'm Mary Jo Parker from the University of Texas. Univer oh, I'm sorry, I got confused. There were so many from UT, but anyway, University of Houston downtown in Houston, Texas. Uh, I'm the executive director of a uh, unit called the Scholars Academy within the Science College of Science and Technology. Welcome. Good morning, Carlos Morales, president of TCC Connect Campus, a part of Tarrant County College District in Texas. It's an online campus. Hi, Lori Austin. I'm director of admission and recruitment at Lehman College, which is one of the senior colleges in the Bronx. Good morning. My name is Sophia So, director of admissions at Gutman Community College, part of CUNY here in Manhattan. Hi, good morning. Debbie Bilo, Vice President for Enrollment Management, Student Success, and also Dean of Students at Southeast Missouri State. Hi, it's Scott Haig, Associate Vice President for Enrollment Management at Cal State San Marcos. Carlos Vargas, President of Southeast Missouri State University. Hi, I'm Dr. Gloria Vaquero, President of National University College in Puerto Rico, and Vice Chair of, of Heads. I'm so happy to be here, you know, seeing this activity that we've been talking about it for years. Uh, for us, for the Hispanics, the admissions, enrollment, registration issue is very, very important. And for me as president, it's, a, it's business. So it's important that we talk about it. We have right now around 4,000 students, students studying online. So we want to be sure that when they move over here, they, you know, they have a place to be enrolled. And when they go back, we have this kind of a communication. So, so I hope that it's going to be a very good meeting, and we're going to have people on Skype, too. Good morning. I'm Joe Spadero, Vice President for Technology at BMCC. Well, by the way, good morning. My name is Alfonso Lozada. I'm the director of the Center for Recruitment of Students that Inter-American University of Puerto Rico has here in Manhattan. Good morning. I'm Patty Ramos. I'm the director of admissions at Bronx Community College, which is one of the CUNY community colleges also in the Bronx. Good morning. I'm Vicki Monahan. I'm director of strategic initiatives at Educational Testing Service. Hi, everyone. I'm Chelsea Kale, Director of Southeast Online Programs. Hi, I'm Olena Zadko. I'm the Director of Online Education at Lehman College up in the Bronx. And I feel at home because prior to coming to New York, I was in St. Louis, Missouri, so for about seven years. So. <laughs> Good morning. I'm Pam Vargas, Director of Research and Grant Development at Southeast Missouri State University. And I'm also the Chief Editor for the HETS Online Journal. Good morning, I'm Scott Greenberg. I'm the Associate Vice President for Academic Affairs and Dean of Continuing Education at Framingham State University in Massachusetts. We're about 20 miles from Boston. Good morning, I'm Patty Kahn. I'm the Assistant Vice President of Technology in the High Performance Computing Center at the College of Staten Island, which is part of the CUNY system in the outer borough, the forgotten borough. Good morning, my name is Emmanuel Esperance. I'm the Director of Recruitment and Admissions at the College of Staten Island. Thank you. And now we want also to open the Skype so the people who are connecting uh, from, from through Skype can also say hi if they can, if the technique. As you know, since everybody, you know, heads has in institutions all over and we are taking advantage that we are in these very nice facilities that are very technologically. We want to take advantage of that and also bring others through Skype using their Skype business license that BNCC have. Uh, and we have people connected from, for example, we have Luisa Davis from Spring Technical Community College. Also, we have Juan Melendez Alicea from uh, University of Puerto Rico. He is the director of Distant Learning. And also, he's one of the reviewers of the Heads Online Journal, uh, part of the editorial board. We also have Jose Miguel. He's the vice president of digital learning at Inter-American, also joining us. 
And we also have Susan Lay from California State University at Long Beach. Carla Forti, she's from EDP University. And we also have uh, Vicente Papandrea, uh, Director of Admission of John Jay uh, College. And you told me that I have Carla also. Ah, uh, Dendi Tiller from National, Un uh, no, from EDP University. Okay. So, uh, Marianne Villarreal, she's from uh, uh, University. Yeah. So we have some of them connected. So we are very happy that everybody accepted the invitation. And as the uh, uh, proposed agenda said, now we are going to do a very brief uh, introduction of what are the objective of, of the goal of this event, and also show you the overview of the HEDS strategy plan that's going to be approved during the afternoon for 2017-2020, uh, and specifically the, uh, the areas that have to do with uh, your, your enrollment in, uh, or your positions at the institutions. So let me start. Uh, do, you, do we have the people? Uh, oh no, start. Okay, perfect. So, so welcome to everyone who are through Skype, uh, and you. I, we hope that you have the possibility to have the audio connected, so we can you can participate from the open discussion uh, from here, or from here. Okay, from here. Okay, perfect. So, and I hope that they can see the the presentation as well, right? Okay, perfect. Okay, f first of all, the special event, as you may see in the email that we send you for the invitation. Ah, sorry, uh, Magdalena, you're right. Introduce yourself for the record. Good morning. Buenos dias todos. Jose Magdaleno, Vice President for Student Affairs, Lehman College, CUNY. Okay, you're welcome. Yeah, perfect. Now we are complete. Okay, it's a, the special event uh, invitation, the main goal is to explore the possibility of HEADS pro promoting the collaboration be between HEADS member institutions to facilitate their students' transfers, as Dr. Gloria Vaquero mentioned, that have been discussed at the board meetings from uh, many times, and we're so pleased that and delighted to have you here so you can help us because you are the ones who know how to make this happen on the institutions. So so this is the main uh, goal that HEADS as a consortium can facilitate these uh, student transfers between our member institutions. And of course, we, uh, we after the, my presentation and uh, Ms. Wallace's presentation, we're going to open that the, uh, to an open discussion so we, that you can help us find out a, a specific and concrete strategies to make this happen, and you will share your feedback and also your ideas to make this happen. For, for the ones who is the first time you have been, uh, you are attending a, bo a, heads, a special event, the HEADS stands for Hispanic Educational Technology Services, and we are the first bilingual consortium dedicated to serving the higher education needs of the fast-growing Hispanic communities. That's who we are. And we serve, or oh, our members are, universities and colleges uh, located in Puerto Rico, Florida, Kansas, New Jersey, New York, uh, Missouri, Texas. We also have Washington, D.C., Massachusetts, California. Maryland and Connecticut, a new member. We also have corporate partners, uh, profit and non-profit like Blackboard, Cengage Learning, Grupo Parada, ETS, que es Educational Testing Service, and we have one of our uh, representatives here, uh, and also Dialpad and Transport System Inc. If we add uh, the members, uh, our members profile for last uh, academic year, we are more uh, almost a million students, and if we want to see the total enrollments between the United States and Puerto Rico, United States have that 25 percent, and Puerto Rico is only 25 percent uh, of this whole total if we add all the students' enrollment among heads members. But if we compare this in terms of Hispanic, the, num the number is almost the same. It's 44 in Hispanic students from this huge amount of students, and, also, and only 56 are non-Hispanic of this whole amount of students' enrollment. 
Also, if, if you want to see these numbers in terms of where are those students located, the one who have the most is Texas, followed by uh, Puerto Rico, and also California, and then New York, and the others have the, the rest of the numbers. This is uh, by state. Uh, our board of, of directors is our major authorities and um, are the presidents of all member institutions and also the designated, if the president cannot join us, he, can, he or she can designate a representative. And this is a picture taken over here uh, uh, two years ago in one of the board of directors meetings. These uh, boards uh, have uh, meets twice a year uh, to establish uh, the agenda ¿verdad? and the, and discuss all the possi possible ways that we can enhance as a consortium our uh, capabilities and uh, those are pictures taken of over here as well in that meeting and that's where what we are going to have this afternoon the board of director meetings and you are welcome to join us because we want to the board wants to hear uh, what you know the results of this meeting the highlight and we have a uh, as part of the agenda a, a place that you can share this our mission as a, an organization is to promote support and increase the capabilities of member institutions in order to enhance the hispanic latino student success and opportunities in higher education uh, this is the mission and our portal is heads.org and as you may see you can find information about what is heads as a, cons a consortium and also a place to share information about uh, your institutions as well and also uh, we showcase all the services and the virtual plaza where is a place that we have the student placita with all the student support services for, for the students and also the faculty and administrator placita. And then uh, the strategy framework that we are uh, proposing and this has been as part of the discussion of all board meetings and also surveys that have been sent to all of our key collaborators at member institutions Sean's, something happened, no problem. Uh, we developed this draft that's going to be presented to the board to have uh, the approval. And uh, I'm going to show you just a small part, the one who have to deal with uh, today's meeting or event. But uh, again, the vision uh, of HEADS uh, as proposed in the last strategies plan, uh, uh, after the surveys uh, uh, questions, uh, they decide to uh, stay with the same vision, that is to become the leading Hispanic bilingual technology consortium to enhance Hispanic Latino students' access and success in higher education. And in terms of the mission, uh, still almost the same, to promote, support, and increase the capabilities of member institutions to enhance Hispanic Latino students' success but we added a success retention and, uh, excuse me, access retention and success in higher education through the strategy integration of technology. We added uh, the last three uh, uh, lines. So that's the one that will be proposed during this afternoon. The strategic goals uh, are promote and advance innovation, leadership and opportunities in Hispanic higher education, promote and support the strategic and efficient uh, use of technology to facilitate education opportunities for Hispanic Latino students, create ongoing development opportunities for faculty and administrators in the use of technology to foster quality teaching, online learning, student success, and student retention. And that's why we have here not only the admissions director, but also, also the distant learning directors and the uh, IT information technology directors, uh, because we think that those are key in order to enhance uh, online learning, students' access, and student retention. And also foster leadership development among, among Hispanic Latino students in order to widen their opportunities for for success in higher education. Our principles that guide our work is, first of all, innovation, collaboration, as we are from different institutions over here, uh, excellence, diversity and inclusion, strategic networking, alliances, uh, alliance building, and in terms of diversity, every time I go and visit a member institution, I emphasize that our, although our focus is Hispanic students, our services are for all 
de, de, de students at these institutions because we want to definitely, uh, we stand for diversity and inclusion, and also culture of service, openness and organizational le learning, leadership development, and commitment to our members. Uh, those are our principles that are proposed for this 2017, 2020, uh, a strategic plan. The priorities, I'm only showing you the ones that have to be, well, first of all, it's gonna be three core areas. The one, the first one is access, and access is very wide, so we, uh, uh, in the, in the, this sentence, we try to summarize specifically what about access, and is to uh, this strategic area focus says on increasing Hispanic Latino access to higher education and achievement of a higher education degree, and has will aim to help members enhance the potential of their re recruitment efforts and increase Hispanic Latinos' understanding about opportunities available to access and succeed in higher education. So as you may see, we want to enhance ¿verdad? the potential of this recruitment and of course this uh, uh, event, uh, want to uh, try to facilitate this, uh, although not specifically to recruitment, but when students have to come to the states because of as Dr. Gloria Marquero mentioned, the you know the crisis that we have in Puerto Rico, but they can find a place uh, to come, and then you can uh, take uh, uh, help us uh, facilitate this transition for these students. Okay, someone is calling, <laughs> but I have the you have to put the blue. To, okay, I hear in the conversation. Okay, the second strategic uh, area is retention and successful completion. And in this one, heads will promote the strategic use of technology to support, drive, and optimize retention and successful completion of Hispanic Latino students and at member institutions. We know that this is very difficult, and you know that the the accreditation agencies are looking very, you know, uh, sharp to to this. And uh, and with this event, we will want you to help us to identify ways how we can Ella, uh, enhance this, uh, not only at your institutions, but uh, Ella, to collaborate with others. Uh, for example, if in a student in Puerto Rico live, if we have this information where he live, uh, where he uh, are, uh, are con complete their students, then the Puerto Rican institution can have this information and also uh, 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 show that the student, although didn't finish in his institution, they complete their academic degree. So uh, this is this is strategic area is very important. Also online learning, because through this core strategic area, heads will promote the development or will try to promote the development of online learning as a means to support student access retention and successful completion, placing emphasis on quality teaching and learning and assessment. Uh, although this have to be do more with uh, our, uh, the trainings, that the workshops that we offer and everything. Also, uh, through this event, we can have some ideas how we can uh, accomplish this uh, uh, goal. In, in terms of the strategy area one, uh, access, uh, the goal, is foster Hispanic, as, as I mentioned before, Hispanic Latino student success and opportunities in higher education. And two objectives that have to do with this event today is first of all, increase members' understanding of factors that limits Hispanic Latinos' access to higher education and strategies to enhance access, and also increase awareness among Hispanic Latino students about existing opportunities to access and succeed in higher education. In terms of the strategies and, um, and the activities that we are proposing, the first of all have to deal more with the event, uh, the services that heads as the consortium provide, is uh, share resources to guide students through career exploration, potential post-secondary institutions, admission processes, standardized checks, financial aid, and degree programs, and the activities that we are pro, uh, pro, uh, proposing for the next three years are uh, first of all, online resources for prospective students through the Student Placita that we have as part of our portal. 
access to the Testing and Education Reference Center. That is one of the services we provide to our students. Um, uh, probably all of you know about this, that students can practice standardized texts like GRE, NCLEX, LSAT, and others, and also access to scholarship, not only for undergraduate, but also for graduate studies. Uh, and also we have uh, the career transition that uh, students can uh, uh, practice, inter uh, have interview simulations and, and access to internships and, and look for, for jobs. Also, the annual, uh, the annual academic fair uh, we are proposing, right now we offer an academic fair every two years for the, when we held the best practices showcase face to face, uh, we provide a free, uh, free space exhibitors to all of our member institutions that join us in Puerto Rico. This time is going to be in February 1st and 2nd, uh, 2018, in Puerto Rico. And we offer you a space, uh, a exhibitor space, uh, booth space, so you can. Uh, uh, showcase your academic offerings to students that we invite not only from high schools but also professionals to who may want to continue or finish their bachelor's or continue student graduates. Uh, also, we are proposing an annual student leadership showcase. We already have developed this for four years very successfully and we are want to continue to offer that. And uh, also, we want to participate in members' graduates fairs. We already do that in Puerto Rico. We have been invited, for example, to the Inter-American Open House that they have at the law school, and also in the University of Puerto Rico, Arecibo campus, we have been at the graduate fairs, and also uh, have been at College of Staten Island Technology Fair, but we want that every, institute, uh, every member institutions know that we are available to join your fairs so we can help you promote the services that we offer to your students through the, well, as part of the membership benefits that you receive and the students can benefit from all, all these services because the reality is that although those services are part of your benefit, if the students doesn't know that those as uh, uh, services exist, they cannot take advantage. And when uh, when we when I ask students uh, when I am in the fairs, did you know about this service, especially in UPR, that you know is a huge uh, system, is the biggest one in Puerto Rico, the public uh, institution, and the information is very difficult to flow. Uh, when I ask, do you know that you can practice, for example, the NCLEX totally free of charge and also have access to the guide, uh, the book, the ebook to get prepared? And he say, really? I didn't know. And then they get crazy because, you know, in Puerto Rico, there are some companies that uh, charge for the practice of the test and also for the workshops that they do so they can take advantage, you know, get prepared for those services. And when they find out that they can actually can do the test and the system score them and let them know how they are doing, they get very excited. So we want to participate on these graduate fairs and also continue doing events that students know that those services are available totally free of charge for them. Other, uh, and, and this one is especially for you, uh, uh, proposing the uh, strategic plan is facilitate processes for students moving to the United States to pursue a post-secondary degree, uh, including new undergraduate students, undergraduate transfer students, and graduate students. And the activities uh, that we are proposing is uh, the online discussion that we are having today with directors uh, admission from US members in the United States and also in Puerto Rico, access to online resources and tools in coordination with admission staff, collaboration with admission staff to facilitate processes for students moving to US and vice versa because probably some of them want to return as well to Puerto Rico, collaboration or get enrolled in Puerto Rico, collaboration in the development of a mechanism to track recruitment, retention and graduation. And please take note of this because the, our conversation will be, a, because look very nice in the paper, but how we can make this happen is what we want to have a lot of concrete ideas from this event today, and serve as a cleaning house for all aspects of Hispanics seeking information about higher education in the USA. This is uh, the strategic, uh, and also 
Uh, another strategy is promote think tank discussion among members on key Hispanic Latino access issues and existing institutional needs in this area, area excuse me, and activities is the head tax force focus, focus on access online space through the Heads Commons, that is, uh, for the ones who doesn't know his, what is the Heads Commons, is uh, we take this idea from the CUNY Commons that you have here in the CUNY, the ones who are familiar. Uh, Carlos Guevara from Mostos was the one who proposed this idea. And we want to, uh, we are trying to replicate, you know, the things that make and work from our member institutions. Uh, and we have already this space available. You only need to sign in and make your profile so you can start joining the uh, conversation and the discussions. And we are proposing a space, uh, use this space to continue because you know we cannot afford to meet face to face uh, every time. So we are proposing this space to continue the coordination and um, discussion of these topics. And also incorporate admissions tasks of the head staff uh, force. force. Uh, in terms of access, uh, we always, uh, as part of the strategic plans, we are uh, proposing monitoring measures and those are to connect uh, with admission stand from at least 60% of member institutions in US. We have to, at the end of this event, find out if we uh, accomplish this goal, uh, this measure. Also participation of admission staff from at least of 60% of member institutions in the US in regular online discussions. Commitment from admission staff from at least of 60 of member, 60% of members in the U.S. to participate in collaboration to support students moving to U.S. and at least two, two heads tax force interactions during the semester through the heads commons and participation of at least three admission staff in the heads task force. So please make sure who want to volunteer uh, for the tax force and also the admission tax uh, in the heads tax force. Uh, because we definitely want to, this is just the beginning. Uh, thanks again for your support and active participation. And now I want to present, uh, if you have any question, well, we're, we're going to open after Miss Weller. Oh my God, who just came? Our host. <laughs> uh, before Wallacer, we want to formally you want me to go there or you want to come here? Yeah, of course. Yeah, yeah. You just came on time because I just finished my presentation. Now we have Dr. Antonio Perez, our host, president of Board of Manhattan. How are you Hi, today? Thank you. Thank uh, you. Yes. Well, welcome to all of you to uh, BMCC, the Bourbon Manhattan Community College. Uh, we're very proud of our institution. But I'll just give you a historical context. Uh, this particular building uh, was initially back in the uh, 1700s by King James, uh, assigned to be King's College, which became Columbia University, and now the MCC has taken over. But it's, uh, we have about 27,000 students, and we're an institution that um, never closes. So we start at seven in the morning to 11 o'clock at night, seven days a week. So we we're very proud of our continuous use of our space, and ensuring that our students have access uh, to uh, the quality education provided on a regular basis. But uh, as many of you may be aware, uh, during 9-11, World Trade 7 came down, leaned against this building. We lost it for 11 years, then we got it back. And at the tune of $325 million, they were able to take down the old building and, and build us this brand new building. Hope you enjoy it, and I look forward to seeing you all at lunchtime. Thank you. Uh, Perfect. Yeah, we're having a special lunch yeah, with his Puerto Rican chef. Ooh, nice. So please introduce, uh, I'm pleased to introduce Vice President Diane Welleser, who will be sharing with you her experience, and that will be the base to open this discussion to everyone. Good morning again, everybody. I'm going to use this one ah, since okay. I'll be up here. Okay. All right. I want to introduce Lisa Casper in the back of the room. She's our Director of Admissions at the college, and she'll be joining me for the discussion after the presentation. 
Um, in order to kind of start the discussion about transfer and how we can work together, I thought it was really important to provide some context about Borough of Manhattan Community College and the CUNY system that we are part of. So obviously we are in the heart of learning, beautiful downtown Manhattan. This is our chambers uh, location, which is about four or five blocks north of here, where uh, most of our classes are. It's nestled between the Hudson Waterway and the New York skyline. So it's a beautiful place for our students to learn. Um, also, I want to just share a little bit more about the City uh, University of New York, and it's good to see so many of our partners here today. Um, we're a network of colleges within the five boroughs of New York City. There's 11 senior colleges, seven community colleges, five graduate colleges. Let's see if I can, there, thank you. Um, in the CUNY system, 40% of our undergrad students are born outside the United States. 44% are first gen students. And also 20% are first generation families to attend college. Now that's much higher at the borough of Manhattan. So let's talk a little bit more about our students. They come to us for several reasons, and it's probably like your institutions. They come here for programs of choice. They come here for the location, affordability, and the diversity. Because we are on a major transportation hub, our students come from all five boroughs. So they're coming, 31% of our students are coming from Brooklyn, 21% from the Bronx, 21% from Queens, and 18% from Manhattan. 40% of our students are Hispanic. In, 19, in 20, 2016, 41% of our incoming freshmen were Hispanic. And as a matter of fact, that number has increased 30% in Hispanic students since 2010. Also in 2016, 37% Hispanic students completed their degree at BMCC. Um, additionally, in addition to Hispanic students, we have 30% of our student population is, is African American and nearly 15% Asian. Now I'd like to talk a little bit about the diversity of our students. First of all, we rank 16 nationally and number one in the state of New York for Hispanic students in providing associate degrees. So, so that's our ranking nationally. 16 and number one in New York for Hispanic students in, in, in earning associate degrees. We rank number 11 nationally in delivering associate degrees for Asian students. Number one in New York and number 10 nationally for students, um, let's see, what is that? Oh, for overall minority students. And then also for African American students, we're number one in the state of New York and number seven nationally. So those are imp impressive stats. Now I want to talk about the, equ the Equality of Opportunity Project. And this was an interesting study that was done by the University of Berkeley and Stanford. And what they did is they examined 30 million records, educational records, and tax records of students. And what they're really trying to find out, were students really getting the value of college? Was it really helping to move up their social mobility? So as you can see here, the stats on the screen show that the CUNY system ranks third in the nation nat nationally. So you can see 7% of the students started out at that lowest in income quintile, and by their 30s were to the top of the scale. That's fairly impressive. At BMCC, what we find is our students are coming to us are in the lowest family medium income. And also they begin in that lowest income quintile. So despite these challenges that our students face, 6.1% of, of those students reach that highest income quintile by the age of 34. That's fairly impressive. 
Even more impressive, 41% of our students actually moved up at least two income quintiles. Um, also, we have came through as the average female salary among community nationwide, um, our women um, have the highest salaries. So I think that this is really proof that the work that we're doing is paying off and our students are walking away with a greater ability to have um, social mobility and improve their lifestyle and their earning potential. Okay, all right, so let's talk about uh, some of the things. In New York State, we are number one in granting associate degrees in education, business management, marketing, computer technology, computer information systems, and criminal justice. And on the national scene, here's how we perform. Number five in criminal justice. Number seven, computer and information sciences. Number eight, business management and marketing. And you can see there the impressive results that we have in, in granting associate degrees to our students among 1,000 community colleges in the nation. In academics, our top programs that our students ask for are business, criminal justice, liberal arts, nursing, and STEM. Um, of course, this, this assortment of programs is always changing. Last year, we added three new degrees. We added economics, gender and women's study, and public health. So 97% of our students that come to us for career programs, like in healthcare, business, and accounting, they pass, 97% of them pass their technical exams within six months of graduation. Nearly seven out of 10 of our full-time students attend tuition free. A lot of it is because they're eligible for state and federal grants, but we have a lot of exceptional special programs like ASAP that provide financial support that really help students go to school tuition free. Nearly nine out of 10 of our students graduate debt free. With all the chatter nationally about the cost of education, this is a very impressive fact, and this is why a lot of our students come to us. And again, it's they're eligible for grants. Our scholarship folks, our financial aid folks, and our special programs team really work hard to lower the debt for students. When they leave college debt-free, they're free to transfer to a four-year four institution and aren't encumbered by a lot of debt. So that framework and that basis that we give them at the Borough of Manhattan Community College allows for a seamless transfer to other four-year institutions. Most of our students, 75% of them, go on to pursue a four-year degree. Um, most of them go to our CUNY partners. We have a great, that's the benefit of our CUNY system. We have articulation agreements, and we work with our partners to create that seamless transfer for students. But we're also very proud of our students that transfer outside the CUNY system. They're going to students, uh, schools in the SUNY system, the state of New York system, NYU, Columbia, Vassar, Cornell, very impressive places. So really, our college is an impressive place for our students to start to really help them realize whatever their education or, or career goals might be. So that kind of gives a framework about our institution and about the CUNY system. And I wanted to open the uh, rest of the conversation up to questions that you have and some of the challenges that you have and so we can continue the conversation uh, about admissions and transfers and how our college can connect with yours. So thank you. Mm -hmm. uh, no, don't go, oh, okay. because you're the expert on this topic. Okay. <laughs> I'm just the coordinator. <laughs> uh, um, we are taking advantage of what, what you do and what you present. And of course, since we have some uh, members of CUNY here, we would like to uh, see how you do it and how we can uh, 
replicate this with other member institutions so, uh, in which way we can uh, expand this not only for the CUNY system but for member institutions in Puerto Rico. Uh, we want, a, although in the agenda have a coffee break since we, everybody have already coffee, anyway if you need more coffee you can feel free and step up, but for the benefits who the, who, uh, of the ones who are through Skype, we're going to uh, skip uh, the coffee break and then start a uh, open the discussion to this and especially uh, uh, emphasize on how we can expand this uh, and these are very impressive uh, numbers that you gave and how we can take advantage and who can who want to start questions ideas to share i we have to use the microphone for the recording. Yes, uh, I'm from Science from Inter-American University in Puerto Rico. So my question is, uh, I see that you have uh, uh, this uh, seamless transfer, both to CUNY and non-CUNY. So since we're non-CUNY, let's say heads, how can we insert another bullet there that says heads members? Uh, what are the, uh, you know, the processes and how so, we can make this? Uh, so the first useful. thing would be a conversation with academic uh, leadership or enrollment leaders to identify where our programs connect. We talked about our five programs, a lot of our programs, and how they match up with your programming and your curriculum. And then we would identify a special program or curriculum and start there. And then our advising team would work up with your academic team to kind of match how we can build a two-year degree with an additional two years. So it begins a partnership, and we build it articulation agreement by articulation agreement. And you build them basically one at a time. And that seemingly has what worked with our partners. In CUNY, it works really well, but we get to meet with our partners all the time. And we keep building program after program and course after course. So that's how, how it would work. And we, that's how it could work with your institution as well. Um, if I may, pre President, did you have a question? OK, so I noticed FIT, Florida Institute of Technology, I'm assuming. Mm -hmm. And so how did you? Fashion Institute. Oh, Fashion Institute. Oh, well, yeah. that's in New York. Yeah. Never mind. <laughs> there goes my question. I was going to say, how did you get them to leave? No, only they don't in leave, New York do they? Fashion Institute. <laughs> yeah. um, do any of the CUNY schools want to talk about the work in developing articulation agreements and seamless transfer? Uh, like, Lori, you've probably been working at this longer. With some of our sister schools, community colleges, we have started what we call guaranteed admission programs. And as you said, Diane, it started with forming very good articulation agreements. Many of our programs do articulate. And then telling students if they begin at the community college, once they get their degree, they can transfer, sort of no questions asked, and the programs are aligned so that they will get all of their credits. And we would certainly love to be in discussion with schools like yours and others in Puerto Rico. Um, we also, I mentioned to, um, I'm sorry, I don't remember your name, from Houston. We were, that's okay, we were talking about STEM programs as well, and we recently got a big STEM grant, so we are again working with both BCC, my colleague Patty, and others on specific STEM programs and bringing students from the community colleges to Lehman, but working on summer programs and other ways in which the students can become part of our community while they're still at the community college level. So we're doing a lot of this right now. Yes. Oh, OK. Uh, Alfonso Lozada from Inter-American as well. So we always come to your um, transfer fairs every single semester we're here, at least now I'm here. And um, our selling point for your students is always our low cost of tuition, because it's only 178 something um, per credit. So that's one of our advantages as an institution. And what's happening with uh, this tuition-free idea that the governor has, 
how is it going to impact you guys? Because, you know, I, I want to see how, how you guys are going to deal with it, because then that's going to sort of break us. <laughs> At least our selling point is going to be mute if, if it's really going to happen. Well, let's just say nothing is ever free, is it? Um, I'd like to talk a little bit about the Excelsior Scholarship. It's been very challenging for us because um, the tuition-free portion for at the borough um, is really only el eligible for students that fall into the income category of 60000 to 100000 Most of our students fall well below that. So even though there's this advertisement for free tuition, at our institution, not many are going to actually benefit from it. Um, it is kind of stretching into more of the middle class population, and we do have some students, especially independent students. Uh, for some reason, when they go through their FAFSA scoring, independent students don't do as well. So independent students with 25,000 um, family income normally don't don't get um, any grant. So that they're an audience that might benefit. So we've been working hard at the college to identify and then to communicate to our students where their benefits are. And it takes more time and more energy to share that message. Um, but um, so it isn't ultimately going to impact our students greatly. So. Uh, Scott Hay, Cal California State University, San Marcos. Mm -hmm. Could you expand upon the seamless transfer? Do students, do their transcripts just transfer data, uh, do you just do data exchange with the four-year schools? Um, is there an academic success presentation done at the community colleges before the student transfers to the four-year schools? Um, and then is there a guarantee program where the students will complete their degree at, in two years once they transfer to the four-year schools? I might need some of my CUNY partners to help with this question, but we do have the, um, all of the records within the CUNY system, so when we transfer, everything is there. That's the beauty of that system, so that's really important. As far as the presentations, and it depends. It depends on the school, it depends on the partnership, and I think that that's one of the areas that we can really work harder on, because once we find these um, seamless transfer, these guaranteed transfer relationships, then what we have to do is we have to start sharing that story in the high schools. Because students aren't really aware that they can come to us or come to a community college and then go to a four-year university. It really lowers their total cost of attendance and it's a huge advantage for them, especially if they have in sites a private college somewhere. Um, so we really have to work harder in communicating with prospects what options are available for them. If they want to go, to, if they want to go in education, what, what, what college is the best fit for them? If they want to go criminal justice, it's John Jay. We have those, those pathways that are very, very clear. And one of the things that we're working on is in our web communications and our prospect communication is clearly articulating, if you're interested in this meta major, here's the colleges that offer seamless transfer to those agreements. As far as the two plus two and the guaranteed two year, can any of my CUNY partners uh, chime in on that? Do we have a two year guarantee? program it depends on what program they're going into but we we have very now intrusive advisement and we actually starting this fall we have someone on our staff that we've hired it's a new position who will be spending one day a week at three of the community colleges to uh, CUNY schools one SUNY community college mm -hmm. to interface with the students, make sure they know what they should take so that they're working with them all along. And of course, working very closely with the community college, advising staff, you know, kind of integrating um, our practices with theirs and collaborating on a level we've never done before to make sure that the students are taking the right things. And most of them that transfer are in the AA or AS degrees because then we can guarantee that all of their credits will come over so that they, in two years, as long as they're attending full time, will be able to get their bachelor's degree. 
Laurie brings up a really good point because when we have an entering freshman, it's really important for us to know what their long-term goals are. Because if they start out and not take the right courses that get them to that education degree that they really want at the four-year institution, they may be wasting credits and time. So when we're trying to get students in and out um, in four years, it's really critical that we start out on the right path at the community college and try and make sure they have that advising direct with the four-year university. So they're partnering with our advisors and also the advisors at the four-year colleges. And that's critical, very, very important to the success of the seamless transfer. In California, we at the Cal State system, we started the California Promise Program. Mm -hmm. So if a student goes to one of the community colleges, completes a specific prescribed set of courses, they're then guaranteed transfer to a Cal State campus and to graduate in two years. Uh, they get a priority registration, enhanced advising, and if we can't graduate the student in specifically two years, then each semester afterward is free. Wow, so how's that going so far? <laughs> uh, it's starting this coming fall. Oh, excellent. Uh, and what we've decided to do at San Marcos is just to pre-enroll all the students into, the pro into their classes each semester. So that way that they'll be guaranteed to get the classes that they need each semester. And yeah. makes it easier for the students. Yeah. And us too. <laughs> <laughs> yes. I, I, wanna, I, I just want to step out. Uh, the award technical guy, what is your name? John. John, ah, easy. John here is gonna open uh, the audio for the Skypes, who, the ones who are joining off through Skype. Uh, if you wanna say something, Tito and all the others, Jose Miguel, uh, you can only start talking and, and we can definitely uh, hear you here because we, uh, we want to hear your ideas also and, 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 and share your feedback, so feel free to do it. If you're not using, uh, if you're not uh, going to talk, please uh, mute, so don't create any feedback or anything. But you are allowed uh, to step out and, and also and, and, and talk and share. But we continue with the very interesting uh, can, can, questions can you that you're me? having. Can you hear me? Mm -hmm. Can you hear me? Okay, yes, we can hear you. Go ahead. Uh, okay, great. Um, as you know, the University of Puerto Rico has been incredibly inconsistent with, with heads. Uh, I think it's very obvious from our history. Um, nonetheless, we, we are at the present moment uh, committed now to, to, to heads. And um, we want to start out really slow, which is basically um, offering courses uh, from our end and, and hopefully uh, getting offers from the heads institutions for our students. We're not talking yet about programs. We're talking about individual courses. Um, what would be our next step uh, to be able to, to have something like that going uh, in, in short term? Uh, Tito Melendez, uh, he is from University of Puerto Rico, Rio Piedras Campus, and he is uh, one of our reviewers as well of the Heads Online Journal, and he has been a very advo advocator in, for, uh, you know, he advocacy not only for decent learning and for, for you know, quality and, and everything. So we are glad that you're here, Tito, and thank you for, for your idea. If that was a question at the end, uh, specifically to well, Mrs. Wallacer, or can you please clarify? We're trying to, do you have a video? Because we're trying to see you. No, he left. Ah, mira, there is a, there is a question from Carla. Uh, is there any documentation with the transfer credit options for students between institution in Puerto Rico and New York? Probably a, uh, or some of our colleagues from Puerto Rico can uh, reply this? I'm not aware of any official documentation. There's a lot of documentation, but what I would recommend is that you just reach out to us personally and we'll begin the conversation because that's ultimately what these transfer agreements come down to, is the two institutions having a conversation, matching up programs, and then talking about how we can make that seamless transfer work. 
So uh, hopefully you Belkas can share my contact information and then also the CUNY system contact information so that we can kind of begin to having the one-on-one -on -one conversations, but that's what I would recommend. Okay, thank you. We were thinking on the possibility of having just one standardized form for transfers between the heads organizations and the system in the states. So it's a lot of work because we have to match yeah. the organization, but at least the basics criteria uh -huh. for that uh -huh. agreement, because uh, we do have some articulations in Puerto Rico and the, the formats are more or less the same. So if you establish the criteria, the minimums that mm -hmm. you need, uh, we can try to follow that and probably we'll increase the, the mm -hmm. transfer possibility for the students, studying being on ground or online. So maybe we can try to, that was the, the original idea. I see, I see. Um, that sounds like a great place to get the process started because it would collect information and would give us the talking points to start forward. So I'm not sure in the organization how we would begin that process. We can certainly draft something and then yes. begin a dialogue back and forth. Um, Lori or any, Manny, something to contribute? Thank you. Um, within the university, what I guess the resource or tool that the university has given us in terms of the CUNY institutions for the seamless transfer is having a common general education requirement. So when students obtain an associate's degree and they transfer to a senior college, their general education has already been completed. So it's just a matter of finishing up the, the next two years and providing them with an educational plan. So though we don't guarantee two years, I think our responsibility is to give them an edu educational plan so they can finish in two years, knowing that their general education requirements have been completed, whatever additional requirements at the senior college, and obviously the major. So in terms of the conversation, in terms of CUNY and HETS, I think that approach would be the same in terms of can we come to agreement in terms of satisfying general education, um, knowing that the schools, the, uh, the individual institutions would have to agree in terms of major articulations and that sort of thing, and obviously a certain percentage has to be done at the issuing of the, the school that they end up transferring to and obtaining a degree. But I think the starting point would be the general edu 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 education requirements and yeah. using that and as a template for further articulation between the schools. Great, thanks Manny, that fills in a lot of detail. That's great. Over here, okay. Yeah, uh, let me read the notes. Can you? Tito. Uh -huh, Tito Melendez is, because I think he loves, uh, lose the audio. He, you are, are interested in offering courses to our students? I'm sorry. Espérate, déjame, déjame ver lo que decía. Uh, and our students from heads institutions and offering our courses to heads institutions. So they are a, he, that's his question. The OMI, that's his proposition that the UPR, UPR has finally put distant education in its strategic plan and we are interested in offering courses to our students from heads member institutions. So UPR is very, UPR actually is the, uni, the only public institution in Puerto Rico, the rest are pu pu uh, private. So uh, I think that's something to take into consideration. Uh, a CUNY is public mm -hmm. as well. So probably we have to see in terms of agreements, what is the difference between is this a public, uh, is a private, uh, you know, um, and, and, and work from, from there as well. Any other question? And, yes. I, and yeah. I would just like to add, yeah, on course. that discussion, we'd have to bring our dean of online education and our academic folks into that discussion, but certainly can have it, that discussion. Good morning, Carlos Morales from uh, Tarrant County College in Texas. Uh, one of the things that we have been doing in, in our system um, is to create a college-going culture, which starts in dual credit, yeah. uh, and, and in Texas, by law, dual credit courses are accepted at two-year and four-year institutions. So whatever number of, of credits you earn, I mean, you, you arrive at that institution with those. So the college-going culture is number one. Number two, um, there has been a lot of talk about the reverse transfer. So those that you know uh, uh, have an urge to move to the four-year without finishing the associates, um, 
they, they have been benefiting from the fact of completing at the fourth year and then they get two degrees as they as they complete all that. And the third element is at my institution, while we have a lot of uh, articulation agreements, in my campus being an online campus, we have to solidify certain agreements. So the students taking online programs arrive as true juniors at the, at the four-year institution. And we have been successful at, at least with 10 of the you know, biggest institutions that, are, uh, that we are feeders to them. So those are some of the strategies we have been um, implementing. You know, not, not, I mean, not all the problems have, have been solved, but, but a lot of them, if you will. And I know that um, um, at the university, or no, it's the Community College of El Paso, that they are having s extreme success with that college uh, Dual, dual credit, I think 50% of their students are transferring, which I think tops the national uh, numbers on students from taking college courses in high school. So it is a great way to increase enrollment, but most importantly, to build the confidence of students, to know that they can take a college. And a lot of our first generation students and um, students that come from families don't have strong mentors, so those early relationships taking colleges are really, really valuable, and so that's a great point. Um, the reverse transfer is another option. We're st still trying to get that rolling. Uh, um, and, um, but I like your online suggestion that you brought up about that guarantee to come in as a junior. That's a really uh, a great thought. And especially uh, emphasizing the fact that the programs are exactly the same. We don't make a distinction yes. between the face-to-face -face and online. Nice. So, I mean, yeah. it doesn't matter. The transcript doesn't make any distinction. Yeah, impressive. Um, I'll just share something we're piloting at Southeast Missouri State, uh, Debbie Below. Um, we have something called the Transfer Mentor Program that started this spring. We have about 50 students who have registered for the program. The way that it works is that a student signs up as a either leaving high school or their first or second semester at their community college. And by participating, and, and we're, we've now partnered, Dr. Vargas has signed um, agreements with two of our top feeder community colleges. We've, we've sort of taken a look at every one of those roadblocks that stood in the student's way. The cost of submitting a transcript to have it evaluated, the cost of the application fee, access to the degree audit system, and so now these two partners for those 50 students will send us a transcript every semester and we'll begin to build their degree audit for them. And then an advisor back at that institution has been granted access into our degree audit system to help mm. them track their program. Nice. That's just very brief. And when they sign in, I'll just mention too, by signing in, they're agreeing to reverse transfer. That's the real kicker for the community college because then as they transfer to us, we've also agreed to send transcripts back for free for all of those students to help them graduate. Excellent. Very good. Great model program. Mm -hmm. Any other idea or, or experience, strategy that you might mm -hmm. see? Thank you for sharing your ideas and how you do in your system. Any other who may want to share their strategy and how we can, as a consortium, uh, replicate or collaborate uh, on this? Not all at the same time, please. Just one. OK, go ahead. The only thing I want to mention is we have found that math is a really big stumbling block for students coming from both high school into whether it's a two-year or four-year program. So we've also been really trying to focus on a lot of math workshops and collaborative programs, um, again, during the summer with the community colleges, particularly for our STEM students. So I think preparing students in math and English as well, but particularly math, is really crucial for their success. And to support Laurie's point, 70% of our students need math remediation, which is probably pretty similar to the numbers that you're looking at at your own institutions. I guess I just have a question because um, I'm the director of online education and you know the challenges that we often have is training faculty and preparing faculty to teach online right and so when we're here talking about access and retention and graduation you know 
you know, I have this red flag, okay, open education resources, uh, what else can we do to reduce the cost, as well as how can we partner and work collaboratively to prepare our faculty to teach online, because that's the direction we're moving, to reduce the cost, um, as well as many other benefits, uh, provide flexibility, affordability, all of that. So I'm just wondering, because here, for example, uh, for those of us who are from CUNY, we know that we have CUNY SPS, which is our central hub for online, as well as other colleges, they have their own units um, that are also um, addressing that need for training faculty. Um, I personally have partnered with CUNY SPS on a couple of occasions where we've trained collaboratively their faculty and our faculty so that we're sharing resources when we're developing these instructional workshops, instructional programs for faculty to prepare them to be successful. So I'm wondering whether there is any conversation that happens you know, in this room regarding faculty preparation and some of those uh, exchange of ideas in terms of um, if I'm developing a program, um, it doesn't make sense for somebody else to start from scratch as well. So um, I guess question to the group if uh, that's something that happens. We have the ID, some of the ID here. Uh, we will light Francisco. At the University of Texas Rio Grande Valley, we have our own quality assurance program for, uh, uh, I guess, to train faculty in the use of the best practices for, for delivering online course. That includes uh, uh, quality. Uh, we're a quality matters institution. Uh, we are an online learning construction institution. So we grab from different uh, rubric, quality rubrics in terms of uh, uh, I guess supporting faculty for pedagogy and technical, technical support. So I, I guess I offer that program to, to any of the, uh, it, it's a Blackboard course, it lasts uh, 16 weeks, um, and it has lessons, practice, and everything on it, so it's, it's available, I guess, for the, for the construction. Ah, uh, present, present. The one thing that we should consider, uh, because we are a consortium, is how uh, you can have access to our students that are graduating. Because if you don't know who they are, then you're gonna compete at an equal level with other individuals. But if we provide you the names of our students and, and the ability to communicate with them, then you have now a, a chance to, to, at an early stage, begin to communicate and share with them uh, what opportunities you have. I, I think what's key, uh, at least for us as it relates to our students, is really the affordability part. How can you make it as cost effective as possible for our students? Uh, but more importantly, we'd like to provide our students with the opportunity to have other experiences. So when we, uh, when we have the president of Fisk University here or other institutions of the country, we feel that uh, it's not just CUNY. Some of our students like to have the opportunity to live in a residential environment. They'd like to, to study in Puerto Rico. So we want to provide them as many options as possible. So it's not just keeping them in the city, it's about uh, opportunities so that we see this as a two-way street where you have access to our students and you provide them I think more importantly the key issue here is the affordability part but a different experience that they would not have if they were just staying in the city and that's really what we're looking for is to provide as many options as possible for our graduates and this is how I think we can work together what do you think Carl? <coughs> I okay I actually <laughs> I agree, and I, as you were speaking, I was thinking about our transfer mentor program that Dr. Bill just described. Really, truly one of the, from my perspective, one of the benefits to that program that we have now instituted is that the students don't have to stay in one institution, and then when they decide to transfer, then go through the whole process of seeing how they can transfer to other place. They really, see from the very beginning how what they are doing at the community college fits in with the institution, the four-year institution. My view is that that facilitates mentally in many cases, but also logistically, the transfer process. So doing that actually is uh, uh, knowing where they are would be actually also automatically part of that process. That's one of the reasons why um, we, we're so excited about the, the community colleges we've talked to about this program have been very excited uh, about that possibility because the reverse transfer, the reverse transfer works. Uh, the students 
feel that they are actually already accumulating things that they can go to the uh, degree audit system at our four-year institution and see how what they're doing is already building that. So my, in, I think one of the things we do is we uh, provide that kind of incentive, mental incentive, uh, to, do, to do the transfer. Now, of course, from our perspective, I think uh, we may have a leg up in terms of when, where that student decides to go. Because if, if he or she is already uh, building that, that kind of profile in our institution, to go to another institution where the transfer mentor program is not in place, then becomes a little bit of a, of a challenging part. You know. I guess it's from a personal experience that, that I am, am really advocating for this because as a kid growing up in Harlem and getting on a bus and 30 hours later being in Oskaloosa, Iowa, and that was a, a traumatic experience, but a learning experience. And I just think that our students deserve to have that opportunity to see what the other part of the world look, uh, looks like and, and experience that. And I just think that there's some students who want that. And this relationship that we have, they want to go to Puerto Rico, they want to go to Missouri, they want to go to Texas, we should provide that for them. And I just think that this is an opportunity that we have to take advantage of because it works well for both the institutions receiving and for our students that would be looking to, to transfer. As a, as a person that is always uh, talking to kids, because that's mainly what I do, I'm a foot soldier for the university, I just go to college fairs, that's what kids want. They want to have the experience, that's why uh, it is very important for, for, for this to, to happen. Because they do, that's what they want to do. They, wanna, they don't want to do it online mostly, that's for the adults. <laughs> no, really. The kids just want to have the experience. They want to go to Puerto Rico. What is that like? Who can I meet there? What can I learn there? So uh, our university is 60% uh, transfer, so the non-traditional. They're already working adult. I mean, we're talking about FTICs here. Essentially, all the conversation I've heard is FTIC generated. And, uh, or that could be my mistake if that was not accurate. But I think uh, how HETS can be a conduit is to think about the certificate programs that you all have. Uh, and uh, the student would be able to access it without going to every single university to find out what they have available. And it's not that HETS would offer the online, but they would be the conduit for my students to look at CUNY master's programs, maybe bachelor's programs, or we don't want to, we really don't want them to leave our university, but nonetheless, and look at master's, PhD, et cetera. So depending upon what fields, that would be a conduit for either tiered master's programs. I mean, we've been very successful in our MBA program uh, with working adults being, being tiered and some online, some face-to-face, -face, some hybrid. But that's, that's where I would see another area that HETS could support all of our institutions. I just jo have been jotting down notes at, as the discussion has been going on. And I jotted down some challenges gonna that I'm going to talk to you about. <laughs> Well, for one thing, in the state of Texas, the degree requirements um, do require completion of six hours in United States history, government, or political science, with um, the, including the constitutions of the United States and Texas. So if someone came in already with an associate's degree to get a degree, they would have to take these six hours to meet this degree requirement. Um, so just to kind of throw that out there is, um, at UTRGV, we do automatically accept students with associate's degree, so that's not a problem. However, to get the bachelor's degree, they would have to take the additional six hours. Um, we don't offer any uh, fully online undergraduate programs other than an accelerated R into BSN program. Um, and really, since a lot of our transfers are from Texas, because we are way down deep South Texas, so it really is a commuter school. But we, we would have to build a lot of transfer rules to handle, you know, from schools from out of the area, which we will do. But, you know, I'm just throwing that out there as a challenge. But to kind of also talk about things that are 
I guess, good in the state of Texas and maybe something we could emulate is we do have the Texas Common Course numbering system. And so basically all of the public institutions in Texas follow this, this uh, Common Core where we know that these courses are going to transfer in at every institution as this class. So, you know, that could be something that maybe the, the partners with HETS could come up with some kind of common uh, numbering system so that we already know these classes are going to transfer. Um, so, you know, again, I just wanted to kind of throw out, these are kind of some of the challenges that we have, but also some of the opportunities. And, uh, and I'm sure Griselda here would like to recruit students from outside the state of Texas, so. <laughs> Yeah, but um, just throwing that out there. A, a few things that, um, uh, and as uh, uh, it was mentioned earlier, we're kind of a new institution in the Rio Grande Valley. Um, we're a combination of two legacy institutions, UT Pan American and UT Brownsville. Um, so we've had to rebuild a lot of our, our processes. Um, but one of the things that we definitely are focusing on are our transfer students, and we are making investments in our transfer students. So we now have um, um, a devoted transfer recruitment team. We've also invested, the university has decided to invest in providing a scholarship funds to assist our, our transfer students because um, whereas our high school students, a lot of them are coming in with a lot of college credit hours, but then they get to our university and they decide to change their major, so now those, uh, so now they're, they're longer than they expected. But our transfer students, uh, for the most part, wrap up their, their bachelor's degree within two, two and a half years. So we have made an investment as an institution to offer scholarship funds to assist those students to transfer into UTRGV. Um, and like Debbie mentioned, we're in deep South Texas, so for out-of-area students, we've also made significant investments to provide on, um, scholarships for on-campus housing. Um, so those are the things that, as an institution, um, we know the value of our transfer students, so we are making the financial investments uh, to come into, to assist our students to transfer into UTRGV. Um, we have, last year, we had our, a 30% increase in our transfer students. Um, and we know that it's because of the efforts. We have a dedicated team. We have the financial investments that we've made. And yes, they're still eligible for federal aid and so forth. But in addition to that, depending on the transfer GPA, we're also offering um, academic scholarships as well as a housing scholarship. Um, so like I mentioned, it's, it's an investment, but our transfer students do tend to, you know, they've already been in a college, set, college setting, they know what to expect, and they are more serious about, not that our high school students are not, but a lot of them are working, they have families, they have children and so forth, so they're going in focused, um, and we want to provide the financial support, the staffing support to complete that coursework. We're just starting with our articulation agreements, we just did, um, 20-some, uh, almost 30, with the largest community college in the Rio Grande Valley, and we have two others. Um, so once we get things settled at home, like I mentioned, this will be the, our third um, incoming class, then we will definitely uh, start focusing in other areas, in other community colleges outside of the Rio Grande Valley. Let me tell to the ones who are uh, joining us through Skype that we have in the screen uh, the projection of the chat of yeah, oh, you can also use the audio whatever you pre prefer but you can uh, uh, can put your questions or your ideas uh, uh, on the screen I mean on your on the chat and we will see it uh, so so please don't fall asleep and <laughs> <laughs> share your ideas and and collaboration uh, uh, and also I want to highlight that Francisco have been one of a key collaborator at UTV uh, when it was at UTV Pan uh, no, UT Pan American and also bueno, Brownsville, then Pan American and now Rio Grande Valley. And he uh, actually they are the host of the uh, Blackboard license that we have to offer the online trainings that we put together uh, to help uh, uh, faculty, as as uh, you mentioned, a, a train for to continue enhancing their online courses or or, uh, or, or do it uh, in a quality uh, way. And also now next next year and and the, the 
the board meeting. I will present that to the board meeting, but I wanted to share with you. We we made uh, last year a survey on what of the topics that all member institutions, uh, institutions are interested in and that we uh, continue uh, pre uh, offering new, new topics for the trainings, and we already uh, have uh, those uh, results. We also make like an audition of possible uh, resources experts on those topics to see their delivery and how they can uh, 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 lay out the, 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 the online course of the face-to-face -face, uh, training. And we, we will be presenting this to the board and if this get approved, then we will share that for you. But I'm wondering, we, you have mentioned uh, very nice ideas very, uh, and your uh, um, own strategies. Are your institutions are very successful, as you mentioned, but we want to know how we can, uh, how we start, because this is the first uh, conversation, but how do you, pre uh, I liked very much the idea of uh, prepare, a, you know, put together like a form, uh, how to collaborate and share with everyone, and also, as uh, Walter mentioned, Diane, uh, share the contacts to everyone, so you know who are in the other, you know, your, your partner in other institution, but more than sharing the contacts and, and, and the ideas, how we can, how do you propose that we can start moving this agenda forward? Uh, you know, any ideas in terms of IT, since we are a technological ¿verdad? consortium, how do you, Francisco, who is an expert, and René also, and, and, and the others, and Emmanuel, bueno, Emmanuel, you are more in the, in the student affairs area, right? No, no IT. Yeah, exactly. Uh, it, how how we can uh, since we are you know all over Puerto Rico and the state, how we can move forward this agenda? Your ideas, please. Oh, any any other suggestion? Having the the catalogs all in one place for the member schools, so that way when we are reviewing um, the uh, coursework, we only have to go to one place to find the course descriptions instead of going to each institution and trying to find them. I'd recommend a transfer web page, just all inclusive, not only for the universities, but for the students as well. Yeah. Information on college catalogs, transfer admission processes, you know, just all the information for both populations. Sorry about that. Uh, Carlos Vivera from Hostos Community College, CUNY. Oh, yeah, Carlos. Nice to meet you. Yeah, I guess having a central location, uh, maybe a communication system such as SharePoint or any CRM that we can store document and also communicate among all the members uh, will be a good idea. I think besides having links, I think you need to have a place for students to enter general information. This way they can be reached and have some sort of uh, database that's going to be formed. This way you have access to this information at a later date as opposed to just links to catalogs and transfers, which is I think a great idea, but I think we need to have more concrete information. Next question first. Or? Yeah. Just qu currently, is there any page on HETS that features all the member institutions? Yeah. Thank you. Uh, <laughs> uh, yeah, we do have a page that uh, in, in the homepage actually they have uh, the logos in the bottom that save our members and also in membership you will find the list of all of our member institutions uh, and the link to their web page, web page and also to the profile. Uh, but definitely this is a great idea. Prepare like a transfer web page, you know, so we can put together all the information that, that will be great and all the contact and everything. So thank you very much for the idea. I think a lot of us have um, RFI, the request for information forms. If we can have that on the website, then that feeds the student information into our CRMs and we can start communicating with them. Uh, request for information. Okay. 
Debbie, you're taking notes as well because we need. I forgot to mention that we need like a like Debbie, <laughs> a person who can share all the, ¿verdad? the ideas today. So Debbie, do you mind to do our to be and also, uh, of course, uh, uh, Diane since she was the the host of this. So the two of you and someone else. Are you agree uh, that uh, Debbie could do the? <laughs> Uh, the summary for the board. Oh, okay. Ah. If the colleges could indicate if there are specific programs that they would like to articulate, and that way we can see which colleges offer those particular programs to see what par partnerships would make sense. Great idea. Thank you. Go ahead. Yeah, and also, it's very important the language. <laughs> the, sh all the information should be bilingual uh, because for the his his Hispanic and Puerto Rican student coming to the States, moving from one college to other, but with difficulty in the language, is it's, it's just fear. It's a lot of you know concerns in their mind. Uh, I think the language is important, and also the programmatic accreditation of some programs, which is very important for the students to know that, for example, in nursing, in physical therapy assistant, programs like that, that they need the accreditation to, to continue studies and then find a job and allow, allow to work. Uh, so maybe we need to prepare like a standardized format for specific information and put it in our web page, which is already full of information. And sometimes it's difficult to find information there. So we have to, to evaluate how to do that. In, in our page, the heads page. So one other comment I was thinking about besides um, what does the college specialize in? I know College of Staten Island is unique in which we have um, residence halls. So that may be something that we may want to put on this web page about our college to say, you know, this is what makes us unique other than other CUNY schools, especially for school students coming from outside of United States, that this might be something to consider. I, I want to mention that last year we did uh, like um, with BNCC and also with John Jay, like a use, using Google Handouts, like an interview of the financial uh, uh, services that John Jay and Board of Manhattan offers, and we have a, a bilingual, as uh, Dr. Baquero mentioned, uh, persons who uh, they we did like an interview. What, how do you help students? And 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 it was uh, we put it live. Uh, we we did the transmission live. Invite students to join us, and also we put the the video on the on our heads uh, channel. A YouTube channel, and and it was very surprising that uh, last last week on Monday, also I copy Antonio, a student from Spain saw the video of 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 the admissions, uh, the person who managed uh, the student affairs in in Board of Manhattan, she she spoke very perfectly Spanish, and she gets in, actually a uh, select uh, Board of Manhattan to come uh, to the states, and and she tried to contact, she had some problem, and then she contacted me. Because because she saw me in the in the interview. If she if I can help her to find somebody at BNCC too, and it was very interesting. And I know that they already uh, replied probably some uh, miscommunication. So we can use that to, uh, facilities. This is free of charge. Uh, you know, Google Handouts, and we can coordinate with each uh, of the persons that not only put the information but the, put videos that the students know that this person is the one. In in charge, and then, then that that person is the one who offered the services, and also that they had uh, people in, that speak Spanish, because I know in California, in Texas, almost all the, uh, in, of course, in Puerto Rico, that they, although probably the information not maybe in Spanish, but they have persons who speak Spanish, so they can contact them. So we can also do that, you know, more interactive, uh, using that idea that we used last year. Uh -huh. Rene, and then Alfonso. Talking about the languages, which are very important, 
Um, one key point is that, uh, like in our case in Inter-American University, we do, we are accredited by middle states, just like the, the rest of the institutions in the U.S., uh, and we offer programs in Spanish. So that's something that is, uh, in, in, in they're online as well. So you might have uh, Hispanic students coming, uh, even with uh, some previous education, uh, whether they want to go uh, continue with a, with a bachelor's or even a master's, uh, that will be a very good way for you to provide information to them and, and that we can collaborate. Uh, and by the same token, we have in, uh, um, uh, students coming to the States that might need some specific courses or ESL courses that your uh, college can provide. So I think this will be another added uh, value for this. My colleague? I have a question and maybe a suggestion. Um, do you, does HETS have like a brochure or a pamphlet that has all of the institutions that are in the consortium? Would, because it would be an advantage for the students. Say, because I go to Austos, I come here to B, BMCC, I go to places upstate, CUNY and SUNY schools. The kids don't know that there's a consortium. They don't know that they can, you know, maybe if they do a website that they can, you know, transfer easier, quicker. It would be an advantage to have something physical that they can take to their parents. Because, you know, depending on the grade of the kid, the parents are the ones that are making the decisions with the financing. So it would be an advantage to know if they're entering their first year that, oh yeah, when you finish your associates, look at all the other schools that are inside of this yeah, sort of, you know, feasible. bubble, yeah, so to speak. Right. Just to piggyback off of that just a little bit, the idea of a brochure and then taking that you know, as far as to the web and then many communications. So if there are best practices in the room about sharing the HETS message with your prospective students, if, if that could live somewhere within the forum, um, if you're willing to share those ideas um, so we can pass those on to students. Well, I was just going to add in a QR code because a brochure is, you know, one dimensional. You want to get them to the website because that's where everything is stored. Well, the QR will get you there. The, you have to type out the URL if it's on the paper, but a QR code would get them there. Just wondering how many of the schools here have virtual tours of their campuses online? Because I know that we do, and ours is in Spanish and English. So that would be another thing to link to the website for the schools that have that. Hello, Lisa Casper. We're actually at BMCC working on a virtual tour. But until then, we are working with our public affairs department. They recently hired a videographer. So what we're doing for our international students is that videographer is going to do kind of like a, a virtual tour, but from a student's perspective, like coming up from the subway station through the campus. And really, I told them, you know, emphasize all the beautiful parks and the fact that this is a, you know, unlike other places in New York, this is truly a neighborhood. You know, and I think that would do a, go a long way to alleviate fears of parents, especially coming from far away. They want that reassurance that there are parks and it's a neighborhood and there's kids playing and they want that feel. So I said, you know, one way we can get that is through a video. So something like that I think would be a great asset to the website as well. Papa caliente, papa caliente. Uh, who else? The people from the Skype, uh, through Skype, if they want to share something, you are mute, but you can talk also. I really like, I, I think that the idea of have like a form that we can put all the idea, if you have, for example, the virtual tour, you know, everything that we can then pre send it uh, to all member institutions. 
and then have your information and then put it together because you know uh, uploading the information is easy the difficult part is get the information and they uh, and then in a, a you know the key contact person that can help us on this is the most important part also as you remember at the strategies uh, that I mentioned and the proposed board uh, we would like to have like a like a like a committee or like a it is team tank uh, with representation since we have people from California, from Texas, from New York, from Puerto Rico. Here we would like to make an invitation who may want to participate and help us because of course you are this person that uh, on this uh, to coordinate this, for example, the form, the criteria, uh, and we would like to have people from all places uh, that, that you you can let me know, Mira, you can count on me. And also from distant learning, from admissions, of course, and also from IT, uh, you know, representation from the three, because IT is important in order to share the information, distant learning also, and also admissions, who, who knows uh, a lot of information that students are looking for. So who can volunteer uh, so I can take notes and count on you? Well, uh, I think that probably we will, we can have from Texas, California, at least two, one, two, Puerto Rico, uh, also New York, as of course. I think Wallace will be perfect, <laughs> since she has been a very, and she deserves an applause because she has been a very. I'll make sure you uh, have someone from BMCC. It might okay. not be me, but it yeah, may be me. Yo, yo, <laughs> you know, you're very busy, definitely. <laughs> so we would like to, because we would like to. Um, Evela, uh, uh, coordinate this during the semester and have all the ideas uh, together and, and, and also the ones who could not join us that they also know about this, but we want to, you know, uh, send something that makes sense to all of you. So who wants to volunteer? <laughs> okay, Inter-American University from Puerto Rico, who else? Eh? Lehman College, perfect. Uh, this is in the, I'm not taking note, but everything will be recorded. <laughs> Evidence. So from California, who can volunteer? Not all of them. Oh. Yes, Scott, good, good. And also from New York, we already have the commitment of Lehman, uh, Dr. Well, uh, Diane, and Francisco from Texas. Great. Uh, oh, yeah, you're the only one, so you're. <laughs> Yeah, you're the only one here. Like, Ana Milena. Okay. Excellent, Ana Milena. Yeah, she's a very collaborative, you know, she's key. Uh, Ana Milena from, so we have in Puerto Rico, Inter-American and, and National. That is great because we have uh, two different uh, types of colleges. Debbie from, oh yeah, from SEMO, Debbie. Okay, perfect. Representing the Midwest. Let me see who else we have here. Ah, Texas. Well, you you have to be there because you're great taking notes. So, uh, Griselda and uh, uh, De 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 Debbie. Okay, we have two Debbies. Okay, Griselda and Debbie as well. Uh, Carlos from Austos. Can you, because you were the one who started with the idea, especially the web page. So if you can be, and you're that mission director, so perfect. Let me see who else. Okay, someone else. I don't, I don't wanna leave any place. We have already Puerto Rico, California, Texas. Okay, I think we are represented. Okay, so uh, any other idea that you may want uh, us of the one who just volunteer uh, to uh, coordinate. I think that the, the for the uh, tomorrow, Grupo Parada will be presenting the new uh, design of the website because the, uh, they uh, recommend us to change the design because you know Google had changed and now if moving more to a mobile, you know people are looking for a mo in the mobile. So our website was not a, a in the layout that supposed to be accessed by Boa, so now we are uh, moving on that direction. And and he, they are putting everything together very easily. They just add a new feature that you can search. 
uh, depending if you put retention, you will see all the best practices that we have shown in the best practices showcase, the videos, you will see all the articles in the journal. If you put access, you, you will see all the services, you know, everything will be uh, together very easily and, and it will be great uh, to have this with transfers web page uh, uh, with all the information. So thank you for the idea and also to have like a collaboration agreement uh, form with the minimum criteria that, that every institution requests. So when you when you want to make an agreement one on one, you know already what, for example, what Lima requests, what requests for example national, what you know so that we have like a standardized uh, form. Something else that you think we should enhance or you know work on as a consortium and collaborate with any uh -huh. Carlos and then Jose Magdaleno. Thank you, Yuvakis. I really wanted to ask a, a, a question to everybody here to see the kind of interest that there might exist. And we were talking about transferring students. I wonder how many institutions here would be interested or think it would be valuable for them to consider um, opportunities for students to go and spend a semester to another institution, uh, not necessarily transfer permanently, but just to have that as an experience. Um, I, I imagine in some cases, people you know, in, in Missouri, for example, might benefit from having the opportunity to spend maybe a semester in New York. Um, or, or vice versa, and I wonder whether that's something that uh, you all collectively think is worth uh, exploring in some depth. We are interested in both ways. <laughs> I think that's an excellent suggestion. The, it's not really just about transfer, it's really the opportunity to attend another institution as a visiting student for a semester, wherever that may be, New York, Missouri, Texas, California, uh, that really opens other doors for our students. So uh, that's something I think we should all look at very, very carefully. Um, I just wanted to um, remind us all of the need in whatever information we place on the new website to address issues of affordability, right? Because we're talking about transferring, in some cases, moving from state to state or from Puerto Rico to the United States and the issue of affordability and uh, how students uh, can qualify for an in-state tuition rate, what, what the policies are. I think it, if we speak directly to the issues of affordability, it can only help us and help students make appropriate decisions. I'd like to piggyback something onto the visit opportunities or the transfer opportunities. Uh, when I was in Ohio, we had a relationship. We were a community college there with Ohio Wesleyan, and we had a co-curricular agreement that our freshmen signed. And they, every semester, could take up to two courses at Ohio Wesleyan at the community college rate. They also got access to all of their um, events library, they got to carry a card, they got to go to their football games. So um, when you have some local institutions, some of those relationships really help. So those students really feel like they're part of that four-year institution. So that's another idea to consider as well. I'm going to switch the topic. You know, the idea of the externship, essentially. And I'm in the STEM area, so in particular, uh, getting them in research labs and still taking a course, much as they would in a summer study abroad, right, but within, within the United States, I, I think is a fantastic idea. I know Cooney has some outstanding, I'm, I don't know everybody else in the, you know, all the other systems, but I know they have some outstanding labs. Uh, and we would very much be interested in that. You know, I think there's details to work out that are essential as we propose this idea, such as um, we do a, a collaborative with Sweden, Institute of Swedish uh, 
research. And so, you know, we will take students who pay their, you know, they're supported by the institution. When we take our students, we support them. So those kinds of things need to be thought through, but I think it's a wonderful idea internally. One, one last thing, uh, particularly for Hispanic students, I think it'll be a great experience to go to Puerto Rico. Uh, so yes, uh, we're also very interested. Great idea, thank you. I think going to New York or Missouri or, you know, I think the very notion that Hispanic students like to stay at home and this broadening will help them move forward in the advanced degree area. I'm sorry. You want to I mean, just something also to think about to keep online education at the back of our uh, ads minds. Um, currently at CUNY uh, SPS, we have in-state tuition for online students, no matter where you are. So if we're talking about decreasing the time to graduation, you could be, I could be spending the time in Puerto Rico for a semester immersed in the culture, and at the same time, I could still be taking that online course at my own institution and completing that degree, so I'm not losing the time. So when we're getting creative with those different collaborations, if we could integrate that online component, because students, again, not everybody is opt for online, fully online programs. Students love to be face-to-face, -face, especially if we're talking about first-generation students, right? If we want to set them up for success, let's think creatively about the blended programs, right? So maybe part of the curriculum is offered fully online, part of it is gonna be an abroad component. In CUNY, we have those designation in CUNY First where experiential learning and all of those things are important. So when we plan for this, let's think about how we could utilize our already, you know, current online offerings to benefit the students and help them. Okay, so um, uh, Jubelkis, I think you should just get everybody's name now. <laughs> um, and I, that's a great comment. And, and actually, what I'd like to do is uh, put one of the members of my institution on the spot right now. Um, I, uh, Chelsea hasn't really said much, but I think she could talk a little bit about our online programs, the kinds of things that we have at the university. So it might be useful for you to comment on the kind of online programs that we have and the interest we have. Um, okay, thank you. <laughs> so we also have the in-state, so I think that would be um, applicable across a lot of our institutions that offer online. Um, it would be helpful. Something to probably not answer what he had wanted me to talk about, but I keep thinking about access, um, and to me, I'm wondering if maybe the student perspective is missing on a lot of the things we've been talking about. So on the website, are there student testimonials of uh, Hispanic students who have gone through the process? I no, think... No, uh, we have tes uh, testimonial and interviews, the students who have come to the student leadership showcase in Puerto Rico. Awesome. But no focus on uh, hands person, only on the events that we have there. But we definitely, that's a great idea. I think when I think about students um, just any student being concerned about going to university, seeing another student successful and having a mentor who is like them um, to help is really huge. So if that kind of, if that could be set up through HETS in some way where Hispanics are help, Hispanic students help other Hispanic students. Um, if there was a way we could build an orientation to higher education that is focused on Hispanic and minority students. I think that would be very helpful. Um, maybe the fear of the unknown is one of the biggest fears. So if we could help make higher education more of a known for them and qualm fears that they're having and technology is a really good way we could share that. I hesitate to say the MOOC thing, but um, if there would be a way to put an online orientation up through Blackboard or whatever um, LMS you have. Comment about that. 
Okay, we could definitely, I'd love to talk about this because um, Carlos Guevara, who was mentioned earlier today, uh, we are adopting at Lehman their orientation for students for online learning. It's something that they made available to all CUNY and they're very interested in testing it out and bringing it to a larger community. So it's really addressing the need for students, you know, how do you become an online student? What does it mean to be ready for online? So let's continue. So at Southeast Missouri State, we have um, over 30 programs now that you can complete fully online at the undergraduate, graduate, and certificate level. A lot of the programs that were mentioned as being popular in New York, CJ, nursing, business, computer science, those are our popular programs as well as I think they are everywhere. Um, so we have all of those that you can complete fully online. Um, we have a very small population right now of about 1,500 enrolled and 1,750 active students. Um, our, we practice a student service model that I think could be applicable to working with you all here. It's called a flipped uh, model. So when you think about a flipped classroom, if you're used to that, I know you online folks surely are. Um, in higher education, I feel like we often are expecting students to pull information from us. And so we've really flipped that to being a push system. So we're pushing the information out to them. And instead of it being um, pushing information out to them all at once in big packets of material that can be often very overwhelming to people, we've really thought about our communication strategy and giving them just-in-time information. So not addressing everything all at once. Here's what you need to know about application. Here's what you need to know about transfer. Here's what you need to know about financial aid. Here's what you need to know about your credits. Here's what you need to know about all our resources. That can get very overwhelming. So we have kind of strategically figured out what best points of time it's good to talk about. Well, here's how this is going to work. Here's how textbooks work. Here's how classes work. Um, so it's a sort of step, stair-step approach instead of it all at one throwing. And we've seen a lot of great success. Our retention um, and our, uh, um, our funnel of getting students to actually come to us has been much improved by flipping our model and not expecting students to pull the information from us and pushing it to them just in time. That's kind of some of the principle of... What uh, media do you use? So we, um, we use a, a series of either an app, our LMS, or email. Um, also, what I find is a lot of uh, what we do is managing expectation of students, so making sure they understand what is going to be expected. I think there's some pressure to be 24-7 texting all of this, you know, we need information now. And maybe that's not healthy <laughs> in a way. So we manage the expectations of students to understand that we are limited in time and, and space and resource. But um, certainly putting information online so that it is available 24-7 is helpful. But we manage expectations so they know, here's how you should communicate, and here's how we communicate. Usually it's email. Texting is not really something we encourage. Um, and we ha I don't know if you all have had success in texting, but. We primarily use email and our LMS. Um, the more, one of our motto is that um, taking classes, um, our classes shouldn't be easy, but we should be easy from which to learn. So we try to avoid all of that extra minutia that they have to normally learn how to do. We just want them learning the course material, not learning how to navigate our portal or learning how to navigate our degree audit. Those things should be very intuitive. There should be nothing to learn about how to study and how to take classes. You should be learning the material. So that's what we've really tried to just streamline in online. Is that, have I answered it? Oh, okay. <laughs> So she's asked about infrastructure and systems that we've developed. Um, yes, it, so I'm, I hate technology. 
surprise. <laughs> so the, the reason I think we're effective is that we really try to limit our use of technology only when it really positively impacts what we're doing and what students are doing. So we don't use technology for technology's sake, um, for one. And we do have um, a database that is internal, electronic database, and it's critical to our success in helping students. Uh, we have one person who is that student's gateway to the university. Um, their title's online program specialist, but they get to work with that student from their first initial, hey, I might be interested in this, through to, wow, I'm gonna walk the stage and graduate, or wherever they are, they're gonna get to wear a cap and gown from SEMO. That one-to-one -one contact is crucial for someone who's studying at a distance, or even if you're studying on campus. Research shows it just takes one connection at an institution to make a student persist. Um, so that's been integral to our model, is just having one person. I know that's not a technology thing. But to support that person, we have a database. We developed it internally. There are um, customer relation systems you can buy. There are advising and retention software systems you can buy. But our in-house system is very simple, um, and it allows us to track from day one graduation. We like to begin with the end in mind. Journalist people know that, right? Like you start writing something with the end in mind. Um, so from day one, we're thinking about graduation with that student. The goal is always something that we keep in mind. And that database helps us track when the student wants to graduate, what their completion is to graduation, whether they have pitfalls along the way, um, grades or whether they take a semester out. In online education, we get swirling a lot. So students come in, students go out, students come in, students come out. Um, so the database also helps us track those students because in a banner system or in student information system, they're active or inactive. And if they're inactive, nobody ever sees them. But that's a problem, right? Because you don't want to let them just drop off. So this database that we have doesn't have that sort of active, inactive. We have lots of steps in between that's just re really inactive or deferred because we know they're getting married and they can't come this semester, but we know they're coming back. We don't want them to just drop off. So we're still maintaining contact through those life challenges. Or So a database where you can really manage um, the student and their experience and make it a very one-to-one -one personal experience has been very helpful for us. So maybe some of my colleagues in the room will not agree with me here, but um, we do a lot of advising through email because again it's about managing expectations. Um, our first first um, appointment is usually over the phone just to establish that personal connection. But we find that students want to go online because of the barriers of time um, and location. So setting up a timed appointment is really impossible for folks who are working or raising families. So a lot of it's online. We do offer Skype. We do offer big blue button web conferencing. But again, students while they might say they want that opportunity, really when it comes down to it, they want the flexibility of asking the question when they have time to ask it and then getting the answer back within a reasonable time from us. Yeah, so we tried Skype and that was an error on my part for trying to use technology for technology's sake. And students said, no, I'm online because I don't want to schedule an appointment. I want to have the flexibility. Thanks for letting me share. Excellent ideas and strategy and taking notes as well as my new colleague here, <laughs> Debbie, <laughs> who will be sharing. Um, in terms of technology, since we are in well, I'm a focus on, on, on this part. Uh, we definitely uh, wants to well, to strengths, and since we are from all over uh, and, and try to reach, but also we have other 
ideas that I will be proposing this, af this afternoon to the board for the next semester. And one of these is uh, to have an ambassador, a student ambassador in each campus that can help us uh, uh, promote the services that we already have in place and also any other idea. For example, if we create this uh, transfer of student visiting uh, a web page with all the information, how you can go and visit other institutions or transfer, whatever, this student could have this information and share among their, their peers and everything. Also, the databases that HEADS provides that you can definitely benefit uh, from them. For example, I remember that Jose Jaime, when he was at uh, the president of Sagrado, Co Sa Sagrado Universidad Sagrado Corazon, he uh, tried to uh, uh, force students from uh, nursing to take the NCLEX uh, pr practice test before they take the, the real test, because in that way, they do, do, his students ranking very high uh, when they take uh, the, the so though no this service is not only for the benefit of the student but also if you use it uh, as an institution very strategically strategically like Jose Jaime did that you can rank him better when your students pass those tests the NCLEX the GRE the LSAT for law uh, we have the, we have more than 200 students this is a collaboration of Sengage and ETS that we have uh, the representative of ETS here and also ETS has, has other services that you will be sharing with us during the corporate session that you, we can take advantage. So definitely also the journal, you know how to share best practices. You have received a call for proposal to, if you want to go to Puerto Rico uh, in February uh, for the best practices showcase that will be face to face. Uh, since we don't have all the names, we will send uh, for the new names that we have now. So you know, because definitely best practices, as you mentioned, is important to share because someone is struggling can see that and see how it can fit for the institution. They don't have to invent la rueda. Eso mismo, in Spanish. And, and, and you know, this is very important. Take advantage of this, of, of, of all the, this networking and collaboration. So, but for us, I know for you, and, and I totally understand you, but uh, since we are uh, well, uh, in por located in Puerto Rico, in order to impact, we have to use technology. But as you mentioned, we wanted to use it in a way that impact, and in a way that go together with the other services that we have, like the ambassador programs that will be, uh, we, we, we are looking for funds uh, so, so we can, as a consortium, you designate who will be your ambassador, uh, the student affairs uh, office, and we will pay it as stipend to this student, heads as a consortium, to these students, uh, in, depending on the hours he invests doing presentations, uh, whatever the student can do, we already have this program uh, prepared. And also, we in Puerto Rico uh, start a pilot to certify, uh, certify meaning training all the student affairs counselor or the people who deal with students and how to uh, use the head student placita, how to take advantage and maximize and, and we put all in a, in a lab. We have we have impact more than 100 already. We went to, we use National University as the pilot institutions to, to do this program and, and the, the the counselors and all the staff uh, is in a lab with computers, so we made the presentation and they have to take the stamp, the stands, they have to make the interview simul simulations that are very funny, and they do all the process so they know uh, how to use it and how to uh, 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 promote this among their students. And this is available, of course, in Puerto Rico, it's easy to do it face-to-face. -face. It's a three hours training, and we, as a consortium, certified three contact hours for all, all of these who take this uh, training. Uh, but in, in the States, we can do it through the webinars, through uh, Skype, through Google, to, through collaborate with the uh, uh, a new space that Blackbird will uh, provide us. So, or, or I can volunteer to visit your institution, Belay. We have to coordinate this. Uh, and this is another way that we can uh, promote. And now that we are putting together this new effort, those 
those who deal with your students at your institutions can help promote, if we have this web page, Mira, if you want to go to Puerto Rico, go to this page and see all the information, or, or if the admissions director is struggling in how to do a transfer, then that person know that we are doing this collaboration and, and we can want to put everything together, that one thing, one service uh, complement the other and, and support the other. And you know all uh, about this, so we am very excited for all the ideas. But we still have, well, we don't have to finish at 12. We can finish earlier because the day is beautiful. And I don't know if you saw the terrace to take pictures and everything is, is nice. Uh, but at least uh, if you want, we could have 15 more minutes if 11.14, so we can finish at 11.30. Uh, 15 more minutes to wrap in the conversation. Uh -huh. I just want to add these two, but I think it's really important to think about asynchronous. You know, it's mentioned over here. You know, webinars and things like that. Asynchronous is something that we do it online. Aren't you going to repeat it all? Okay, fine. <laughs> I think, oh, I th no, then you would not understand me. But anyway, uh, <laughs> uh, this notion of asynchronous. So a webinar is good, but a webinar is always accompanied by a, a YouTube or a PowerPoint or something. So I, I think keeping that for in, uh, in the forefront of the trainings would be good, right? I really don't. You haven't said much. What's your thought? Um. Well, we, w in, in my campus, we have implemented online advisors, okay? Um, <clears throat> I, I agree with, you know, your thinking in terms of using technology in the appropriate ways. Uh, in, in my case, because our campus is fully online, I have to leverage the use of technology to, to compensate for um, low numbers of personnel, if you will, okay? And, of course, it's not a substitute. It's a way to complement and leverage. But um, the intent is to do, um, I call it shadowing advising. I mean, the, the, the sophisticated name is intrusive advising, but I call it shadowing, okay? And uh, as soon as the student um, make a, a, a contact with us, you know, it's like the shadow, you know, at, at, at midday. It doesn't, you know, uh, um, go away from you. And <clears throat> now in the fall, we will have nine fully online advisors uh, for us. And um, I'll, I'll follow up offline in regards to the email part, because we have been trying to um, come up with a menu of options, OK, uh, to, to do that interaction. So that's one. The other thing is we have a mandatory orientation for online students, and we have a um, online readiness assessment uh, that in, in my system is the gatekeeper. If you don't pass the assessment, you don't get enrolled in a class. Of course, you have you know, 24 hours to, to make up uh, the points that you, that you didn't do the first time. But there is a gatekeeper there. Once you have that assessment passed, you are grandfathered. But it's a requirement. It's a gatekeeping, um, gatekeeper, actually, uh, process. So the mandatory, the online readiness assessment, the online advisors, um, and, and trying to um, make face-to-face -face events, even, even for a virtual uh, institution, that works because we still have a lot of students that um, are face-to-face. -face. They, are, they are using uh, our offerings to, to complete, okay? So they are in a hybrid program. I mean, for, for them, it's a hybrid program. So that is also an important uh, uh, aspect um, that we have implemented. So, you know, well, I have 26,000 enrollments. Oh, wow. Okay, so it's about um, 10, 11,000 um, FTEs in 24 programs, more or less. And again, it's fully online. So the intention, as I say in, in, in many of the meetings with my peers, we are creating conditions for students not to come to Tarrant face to face. Some people, you know, get up in arms because, you know, parking and facilities and buildings, you know, you need to justify that expense. But but I'm justifying my operation, which which is the mandate that I have. Thank you. <laughs> Lisa is my backup. 
Este, I want to emphasize that, for example, my experience at, as doctor, uh, I'm doing my doctor degree totally online because face-to-face -face is difficult <laughs> with my job, ¿verdad? with my full-time position at Interamerica. And my experience is, although I'm in Puerto Rico, and the campus that is offering this is in Ponce, that is like one hour from I am, I haven't have to go there for anything. You know, my interview as a candidate for this program was totally online, and I show my ID and you know to and twenty that I, I am Jubelgis, and everything. They have a lot of um, different uh, PowerPoint presentation how to do the, for example, the FAXA in order to apply for the student loan, uh, and they show you pay, you know step by step how to do it and they uh, you know is, is have been very interesting uh, totally online the courses are very nice they use blackboard and and you know it's, it's possible to do all the student support services and and of course in doctor in in graduate it's more easy since the people are more Sometimes this, the struggling is with undergraduate that they are, you know, it's very difficult and they don't read, read the emails that, they, you know, it's more difficult, but it, it, it can be do it. And, and, and of course, we want to highlight those, uh, uh, you know, best practices so, so everybody can benefit from this. Uh -huh. Go ahead. At Framingham State, continuing education oversees the online. And um, some of the things I have found, uh, and we've been doing it since 1998, so some of the things over the years I found have been very successful. Um, in terms of the orientation, we used to have face-to-face -face orientations, but um, we found that it was a limited number of people who came. It wasn't mandatory, so we now use webinars. And at, the, or at these webinars, we have you know, students who talk about how to take on, what was successful for them, what worked for them. We have faculty who teach online courses who talk about you know, what's important for the students, especially time management issues. Um, I find that a lot of the, the students themselves, are, they're not aware, they're apprehensive at first about taking an online course. And the whole thing is if you can give them a fabulous experience that first time, that first time is so critical because if they don't have that experience that you want them to have, um, they're probably not going to try it again with you. They might go somewhere else. Um, so that's been successful. Our issue has been we're a, uh, and I'm sure many of you are, a unionized environment. So uh, we have a training program. We use Quality Matters. You know. But I can't require it, you know, under the collective bargaining agreement. I can't say you have to do this if you want to teach an online course for us, which um, is unfortunate because I think quality matters is a fabulous, you know, guideline uh, to use. So. Thank you. I want to add that uh, in, in the trainings that we offer, uh, we try to do it online. So in that case, the faculty that enroll and the administrators take the experience and ha you know, become a student online for that workshop. So that sensibilizes sometimes you know, the faculty because pro probably faculty teach online but have never been a student online and doesn't know the struggles that when you are a 12 midnight trying to upload before the the, search, the assignment close and upload and it's not working you know uh, it's, it's, it's very I important that you uh, definitely train faculty to teach online but having the experience to be a student online it, it, that's why our workshop used to be face to face but now we are putting it online although this year will be a combination uh, because we want the, the faculty to have this experience and have been proved uh, very effectively. Uh, and also because it's difficult to take faculty, you know, out of the office to, to, to join us face to face. We don't want to interrupt, you know, the courses and the, the institution's uh, events. So uh, we don't want to compete. So, but that's very important what you, what you mentioned. And what you mentioned about the first experience is very important. You know, my first course as an online, you know, I have been with heads 20, almost 20 years. Well, 18 is going to be 
next year. Uh, and and I have coordinated a lot of the workshops and everything, and I take the workshops as well. But I have never been actually a, a, a student online. And this first experience, the first professor was so nice, the course, that I really uh, like it very much. And, and, and then, but it's, a, it's, it's, it's a, a double double because then you expect that all the other courses are the same. So, and then I was like, okay, where is the deadline for this? I didn't find it. And, um, and you know, in the, in the other courses. So it's very important that you think strategically who is the best professor to put the first course together, but then the others have to at least have, uh, you know, the minimum. A criteria so the students don't get get lost. So that's that's definitely important. And I, now that I have this experience, I I can definitely get a, a confirm that it, this is true. A, so someone else, that, how many? Five minutes more, so we can rest and enjoy the beautiful weather. Uh huh, Marijo. So I do teach online. And so I appreciate that you want that professor to be on top of things. But it is, like in any course, face-to-face -face or online, student responsibility, right? You want to, you got to ask the question if you're not hearing the commentary. But I love that you've instituted this training. Did you tell me? Did I hear that correctly? That they have a test. Now, we don't block them. We have a test also, but we don't block them because we didn't want to put up a barrier. But you're totally online, so I can see. I'll tell you, I'll tell you. Let, let me elaborate a little bit. The, the, um, the block, that's the way you describe it, is because w the interest is in us for them to be successful. Yes, I mean, I, 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 as I say locally, I don't need 10,000 students that are not progressing. I mean, because of the popularity, I mean, it's, it's going to be just an open, an open gate and everybody will get there and then right. I have to do cleanup later. And in right. Texas, oh. with the performance-based funding, it's 10% of the operation budget of the district. So yeah. <clears throat> just, just yeah. you know, keep yeah. it, keeping the quality high. Yeah, well, we're trying the same and we do have a test. We just chose not to. We'll see what happens. But anyway. Someone else? Mira, you're a new one. Can I have your name for the record, please? Hi, Dana Pereira. Sure. Dana Pereira from Lima and IT. Ah, <laughs> excellent. Thank you. Yeah, everybody, did you, for the record, say your name? No, you, yeah. So everybody, for, did you, did you did your name when we presented? Yeah. Ah, okay. Lisa Casper from BNCC. So someone else? Chairman, do you want to close in remarks for this event? Closing remarks. <laughs> okay. Well, now, thank you. Uh, I will share with you uh, something that I'm going to share there later with the board of directors. But this has been a, such an energizing session. It's, in my view, one of the most meaningful sessions that we've had in my years at HETS. It really has, because we are listening from uh, to you, the experts, uh, on, on the kinds of things, the challenges that you face and the kinds of things that we should be doing. So I really appreciate this conversation. I do hope it's not going to be the only one. I hope we're going to continue this uh, effort because this is uh, where I find a lot of substance uh, to, to what HEADS is all about. So thank you very much, all of you, for participating. Thank you very much to BMCC for the uh, for hosting this, for the invitation. This has been great. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Yomakis. Okay, but it's some, someone else want to see uh, our host, Diane? Do you want to see some? No? You're okay? Uh, uh, thank you. Mary Jo? Well, just on behalf of everyone, if I may speak on behalf of everyone, uh, thank you for hosting us. And my gosh, what a what a tremendous place to be in historically. I didn't. Who did you share that with us? Yes. Oh my gosh, I had no idea. Anyway, thank you. Thank you, and also thank you from the ones to fro that watch us and stay the whole. Uh, 
conversation through Skype. Any comments that you may want to uh, uh, say? The ones from Skype, we have 10 participants. Carla? Um, yeah, go ahead, Carla. Well, yes, um, I just w would like to share that, in my view, we are also preparing um, or, or changing with what's going on with the next generation. The next generation, there's been studies that, in fact, they prefer to have a mobile phone instead of a car transportation. So for them, having online um, services or anything that's relating to using any type of media, um, either remotely or, or, or even if they're in traditional students, even the traditional students in the future will prefer to have online communication. So I think that we also have to keep in mind that um, all the strategy that um, that are recommended, um, just keep in mind the importance of that. Great, thank you, Carla. Carla Forti is from EDP University in Puerto Rico, so thank you for joining us. Someone else from Skype? Nope. Okay, but thank you. We will conclude early uh, this uh, special event. Thank you again to uh, Diane for hosting us, of course, Antonio Perez, who have to step out uh, for these amazing facilities. Thank you, John. Thank you, Steven and Lisa, who have helped us coordinate uh, this uh, so others uh, remotely can benefit from it. We really appreciate it. Let me give you some uh, two announcements. Uh, the lunch will be served, a very special menu, uh, the 1302, but uh, you have uh, half uh, an hour to relax. Uh, you can use the terrace, it's open, right? And, and relax, and, and also, uh, networking with others in terms of you know continue this and all the ones who volunteers uh, we will after the board meeting we will send in more information and, and coordinate a conference call to to see how we start and thank you to Debbie and our our uh, notes keepers and Griselda that will uh, helping us sharing all of this with the board uh, during the afternoon so thank you again and hope that you enjoy the event thank you so much Thank you.